took it, it as it took it on the way down on the drop fishing. Well, good morning. We are on a very wintry feeling May morning. So I'm here at uh, a commercial fishery that I'm sure you all know, it's Lindom Lakes, and I've decided to fish on Loco Lake. The reason why I picked this lake for today is because obviously there's plenty of fish in here, lots of big F1s, there's lots of carp in here, but it's deeper as well. It's deeper than some of the other lakes. It really has gone cold the last couple of days. We've had quite a bit of rain. The wind is off our backs, so it's at least a little bit more comfortable, but I'm gonna be tackling this large, deeper commercial water with bomb and pellet. Just a couple of days ago, there were fish cruising around on the top on this lake, you know, we actually caught some fish on the pellet waggler. However, as you can probably tell by the, uh, the grey skies and the way that I'm dressed, it's gone much, much cooler. So I'm going to target those same fish, the big F1s and the carp, but I'm going to be tackling them or targeting them down on the bottom. So I'm going to be feeding some pellets with a catapult and then just fishing a bomb over the top. So I'm just going to kick off at about 20 metres where I can loose feed the pellets really nice and comfortably and neatly as well and then see what reactions we get. Well, I've been varying the feed. I obviously don't want to feed too often because I don't want the fish up in the water, but I've had a couple of little indications, a couple of little liners, but this time I actually fed about 10 pellets and actually cast the bomb in over the top. So I kind of followed them down and it's only been in a few seconds and it's gone round. And it's a great big F1, brilliant. So yeah, so that was just feeding pellets and then casting over the top. Sometimes this is just like pellet waggler feed it fishing you know you just kind of got to vary your feed and the way that you're feeding this looks a nice fish to start with I'll show you the rig when we land this one plenty of planes going over today there we go lots of planes going over so I do apologize about that nice fish to start with great condition still very lively <laughs> I don't want to risk dropping in, but there we go. Good weight builders. Let me show you the rig. Okay, so all we've got is just like I say, it's a straightforward free running bomb rig. All right, now the bomb I've got on is a 20 gram bomb. It's uh, an inline one. Okay, so it's free running 20 gram. And then we've got an 18 inch hook length. These are the ready tied hook lengths that I'm using today. It's the first time I've used these particular hook lengths. That's part of the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing. I've got a size 14 hook and that's got a, a band on it as well. I'll show you close-ups of, um, of the pattern of the hook in a moment, but I've just got a banded eight mil pellet, exactly the same pellet that I'm actually loose feeding. So it obviously looks as natural as possible. And like I've just said, I just followed those down and it went straight around and I got that fish. So that might be the way to go. So we've just got an 8mm pellet presented on a size 14 hook like that. Really nice and simple. So I'm just going to repeat the pattern again, repeat the process. I'm going to feed and then cast the bomb in over the top. So there's about 8 pellets there. So they've all gone in with a nice noise. This bomb's going to go over the top. Again with the same noise. There we go, a nice plop. We'll see if we can repeat that process again. It's an 18 inch hook length that these hook lengths are tied up on. And I think when, when the fish are following the, the pellets down, that's a nice drop, 18 inch. But if it's not working, obviously we can shorten that at any time. And I've even caught on, you know, a um, bomb and pellet like this, and I've actually won matches with, with a, uh, just a four inch hook length, just like you would fish with with a method feeder so again it's just kind of trying to find out what's best on the day 
I've got to be careful not to feed too regular because I don't want the fish up in the water. I want them down on the deck. Bit of a shuffler. That's another double. fish we're after thick heavy fish as you can see I mean, just look how thick that one is really heavy fish let's get the hook out really heavy fish as you can see fantastic way of fishing I'm getting a little indication, but I don't think I'm feeding it quite right at the moment. So I've just put three pouches in. I think there's fish there, but they're up in the water. So I'll put three pouches in. Way too many for any fish up in the water to have eaten them all. Um, so maybe that's going to be a better way of feeding it. Just kind of forcing them down onto the bottom. Yes, they'll pick some off as the pellets are falling through the water. But there aren't enough fish there to pick them all up so they've inevitably if they want the rest of the pellets they've got to go down and get them and this is first cast so i'll put the three pouches in gone over the top and then we've got this one it's a proper carp this one that's a better fish that one that one that's not an f1 so i'm just going to repeat that process again now i'm just going to put my pellet on first so i can follow the pellets down just make sure that's working correctly there we go i'm going to put three lots in not big pouches just about 10 at a time Three lots of ten. Let's go over the top. Just give them a moment to go down. And then go over the top of them and follow them down. Bring that back a little bit. That's hung up on a fish. That must have gone over a fish or it's took it. It has, it took it on the way down. On the drop fishing. That's why that 18 inch short length can be good when it's like this, you know, it just gives them an extra bit of time for them to follow the pellet down and pick it up. A lot of it is just believing that the fish are there, you know, if you believe they're there, you're gonna ring the changes to try and figure them out. This commercial feed rod doing its, doing its job with these hard fighting fish. Ones. Some people say you're fishing for F1s, a lot of people imagine those pound and a half fish that they get on lots of um, snake lakes. And you can get those heavy fish, you can really build big weights of those when they start coming, once you've figured it out anyway. Still got loads of power, off you go. big fish so common on these fisheries now that's a big double just single eight eight mil pellet so it looks like that's the way to go we've got to be much more aggressive with the feeding three good pouches 
don't leave it in too long a lot of the bites have come early within the first 30 seconds of the bomb going in so I'm going to feed more aggressive and be a lot more active with the bomb going in If there's one thing that I've learned over the last few weeks on these sorts of venues is that sometimes you're just not quite positive or aggressive enough with your feeding. I've had sessions recently where I've not been catching anything or very, very little. And just by being a little bit more positive, a little bit more aggressive, it's just completely transformed the session or my match. And that's exactly what's happened today. The fish are there. It just needed to be tackled in a slightly different way. And that's something that's been very, very important in my fishing over the last few weeks. It's been a fantastic session, I hope you've enjoyed it. I've got loads more videos like this coming to this channel and there are hundreds more right here now for you to watch. So if you do want to see more of those, hit subscribe just there. And if you want to see more session videos like this, have a look just there. There's an entire playlist of videos like this. So thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time.